Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Myst bonus content. Yes, for the first time ever in my channel, I am including bonus content for my Let's Play. And for this video, I will be showing you guys the alternate alternate endings for Myst, as well as some of the Easter eggs included here in Real Myst. So, first we're going to do the alternate endings. Now, in Myst, there's no real way to die. However, there are certain ways in which you will get an ending that is uncannon. And so we have three different endings that are not canon to the actual good ending. So as you probably would expect, two of those endings involve uh, giving the red or blue page to Sirius or Akinar. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what would happen if you were to give those pages to them. Starting with Sirius, of course. And now, if I was forced to choose between the two brothers, I would have to I would definitely have to pick Cirrus because of the fact that Akinar have all these like weapons and poison in his bedrooms and mechanical and channel wood age and uh, stone ship age as well. So anyway, let's go ahead and give the final page to Cirrus and see what happens. I'm free! Oh, oh, thank you, my friend. My dear friend, you've done the right thing. You stupid fool! <laughs> it looks like perhaps you're in the book now. <laughs> and what have we here? A page. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your new home as much as I enjoyed it. I can't see you. You're getting less clear. I hope you're in the books. <laughs> much the same as I left. Oh, I can all. And that is that. Yep, we let Siri free upon giving the final page to his book, but in doing so, we also end up in the book ourselves. So it turns out that the red book, as well as the blue book, are one-man prisons, in which whenever one person is trapped there and another person uses the book, the trapped person is let out of the book, and the other person that uses that book ends up trapped in the book. Although, I'm not exactly sure how we'd link into the red book, given that all we did was uh, put the final page in there. We didn't really touch the uh, Lincoln panel or anything like that. But anyway, yeah, there is literally nothing for us to do here. We're trapped in here forever. Or are we? I can just load up a saved game. So yeah, that is the bad ending that involves releasing Cirrus. And now, let's go ahead and give the final blue page to Akinar. And I bet some of you are betting that giving Akinar the final blue page will result in the same outcome as giving the final page to Cirrus. You'll end up trapped in the book and Akinar will be set free. Well, you'd be correct. Oh, yes! I'm free! 
<laughs> oh, I feel alive. <laughs> and how do you feel, my friend? <laughs> oh, oh, and what have we here? <laughs> Perhaps the pages you work so hard for? <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> oh, yes! Oh! Perhaps you all see the world from my point of view. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> my brother. Oh, yes. Maybe someone will rescue you someday. So yeah, same exact outcome. Although I will, I will admit this ending with Akinar is actually more entertaining than Sirius's ending. So yep, we are trapped in the blue book with no way out. All right, let's go ahead and load up this save game one more time for the third uncannon bad ending, or uncannon bad ending. That sounded redundant. Anyway, let's go ahead and link to Kavir without getting the page for Atris. So yeah, here we are in Kavir, and... there is Atris, and we don't have the page in our hand. And we can get a better look of the uh, mosaic of King Renarif. So anyway... Hello Atris, I'm here to deliver some bad news. So yeah, we're also trapped here in this room with Atris, but at least we're not trapped in an empty black void like with the red and blue books. We can go ahead and look around here, and uh, we could just clear away this rubble here, although it does seem quite impossible to do so given how large some of the uh, rubble is. And we can pick up the myth book here, or can I pick it up? Nope, I guess I can't pick it up here. But you can pick it up if uh, if you're playing the Masterpiece Edition, although the, uh, the uh, Lincoln panel would just be a still image. It wouldn't show the uh, ceiling of the library rotating. It would just be a still image, and obviously you wouldn't be able to use it because it won't work without that page. So yeah, that's that. Those are the alternate endings of Myst. And now, we are going to go ahead and take a look at the Easter eggs here in Real Mist. And there are quite a handful to go through. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the Easter eggs here in Rhyme. 
And our first egg involves shutting off the gas to turn off the uh, heater in there. And then turning it back on. And then we have to close the door. And just wait for a bit. Now, this Easter egg is actually disabled when you're playing this age for the first time so that you wouldn't discover it by accident upon trying to solve the puzzle of thawing out this room and unlocking this door. But now that we have solved this age, let's go ahead and wait for that Easter egg to come. Which shouldn't take too long. Any second now. Should be happening by now. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's not a sound effect that I added into this video. That is an actual sound effect that you would hear in this game. If you were to turn the gas main off and then turn it back on after uh, going through this age. Yeah, pretty damn creepy, isn't it? <laughs> And also, upon doing that, upon um, finding that Easter egg, you also enable another Easter egg that involves going to the Crystal Viewer. Oops, shit. I didn't mean to press that button. I didn't mean to press the button. Damn it. That was my fault. No, I meant to go down. There we go. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and head in here now, and here we are again at the Crystal Viewer. And now to get to the Easter egg that we've unlocked by getting the other Easter egg in the room with the heater, we have to bring up uh, two of the diamond crystals oops, in the first and last section, and crystal two and four. Four are the tall spire crystal. And the third crystal is crystal number three. So yeah, this is a pretty easy combination to remember. It's, it's one, two, three, two, one, and all the crystals have to be red. There we go. And when we activate the imager, we get a little Easter egg right here. And there's actually a whole handful of images you can get from this Easter egg. And to get to them, you would have to change the color of the crystal one by one from left to right. And then once you reach pink for the first crystal, you then start changing the colors for the next crystal. Alright, now for the third crystal. That guy with the facial hair looked like my, my friend Cody. <laughs> oh, I think I skipped over one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is with the uh, with the color changing for the crystal. Sometimes it like to skip over a color whenever I put my cursor over it. I don't know why it does that. I think there are just a few more 
picture to look to look at. Okay, that's it. That was the last one. Okay, now there is another Easter egg that involves the Crystal Viewer here, and it does not have to be enabled by the uh, gas Easter egg that we got in the other room. So, let's see. The first crystal has to be um, that one, I think, colored red. The second crystal is the wide V-shaped crystal, and it is blue. Um, the third crystal is basically what the fourth crystal is, the tall spider-like crystal. Not that one, not with the flat top, the one with the, the pointy top, that one. And it is colored yellow. This one is the triple spike crystal. Colored green. And actually, these first four crystals are the same crystal that we saw in the journal upstairs in Idris' study. And the final crystal is the one that looked like a, a gemstone. Which I think is the only crystal we haven't used for any of the combinations. There we go. And oops, and it's colored yellow. So hopefully that's the right combination to get our next Easter egg. Um, I think this is it, but I'm not exactly sure. Here, let me change the color of that crystal. Nope, I think I got the wrong crystal here. I think it's the other tall V-shaped crystal that I need. And this one got to be red. No, I had it right the first time. Huh. Okay, for some reason it's not showing anything here. I'm not sure why. Um, okay, uh, let me go ahead and pause this real quick. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I do have the correct uh, crystal combination here, but for some reason, the, the Easter egg is not showing up on the display here. I don't know why. But what's supposed to happen here is we're supposed to be seeing an egg that shows an island that resembles, like, a large baked potato with snow on it that resembles the sour cream and trees on it that resemble chives. And when you change the color of these crystals, it also changed the age itself. Like, if you were to change the color of the first crystal, you would get a different perspective of the age, like a different flyby or a still shot. The second crystal, when you change its color, will change the water level. Uh, the third crystal's colors will change the color of the island itself. The colors for the fourth crystal will change the amount of snow on the island, and the colors for the fifth crystal would change the colors of the trees. Again, I don't know why this easter egg not showing up here, but oh well. I tried everything I can to get this easter egg working, but to no avail. So let's just carry on over to the next easter egg, which is in the Channelwood Age. And I bought this easter egg up briefly during my let's play. So here we are, back in the Channelwood Age in Akinard Room, and yeah, you're seeing, you can see the blue page right here. The reason why there's the blue pages here is because I had to replay this whole entire game from scratch, because I thought I had a save game for this point, but apparently I don't. So yeah, I'm recording the uh, different Easter eggs a bit out of order. But anyway, to get this particular Easter egg, or Easter egg we have to enable the second message on the image here. We don't have to listen to it here. But instead, we are going to listen to it in the worship room. And also about this door. 
Yeah, here you can see very clearly that it had the swing animation that it did not have in the original myth. So, about that second message in the imager, if you play it backwards, you would get a hidden message. Listen carefully. Alright, so let's go ahead and play that message in reverse. Pretty interesting, huh? Alright, now for the remaining Easter eggs, which are all on Mist Island. I'll go ahead and uh, load this game here. So, the first couple of Easter eggs are actually accessible here in the fireplace. And to get to them, we have to put in a certain pattern on the door here to unlock them. So, let's see. Um, first, you would have to make, like, a C-shaped pattern, which I guess resembles the Cyan logo and press this button. So nothing happens right away, but we did unlock a couple of Easter eggs, both we, which we can enable here inside the fireplace. And we have to now put in a pattern that is like the same one as before, the C-shaped pattern, but we have to make a complete circle. And what exactly is this supposed to resemble? Well, you'll find out Right now. Ah, my friend. You brought the Big Macs and the fries. The donuts, my friend. Did you bring the donuts? The donuts. Give me the donuts. Well, the donuts. Fool! <laughs> I fucking love that Easter egg. <laughs> Alright, now for the second one. Uh, here in the fireplace. And for this one, we have to make, like, a crosshair pattern, like that. And again, nothing apparent happened, but we did unlock an Easter egg that is outside, and we actually get a little bonus if we turn the tower towards the dock. And what do you think of that? It's nighttime out here on Mist Island. So what happens here? Well, there's your answer right there. We have turned the tower into a gun turret, or a cannon turret. And the reason why I turned it toward the dock, well, not only can we see it better, because if we go up in the tower, we wouldn't be able to see it, but also something else happens when it's facing toward the dock, and you will see what that is in just a few seconds. Yep, the cannon fires. <laughs> Alright, now the next Easter egg is inside the planetarium. So let's go ahead and bring this console down. And what we have to do here is we have to set in the date uh, March of 1978. Yeah, the day and the time doesn't matter. We just need March 1978. And then after we press this button, we then change March to November. And we got ourselves a game of Pong. And we use the time slider to control our paddle. Yeah, isn't that hilarious? Yeah, the, uh, the day slider doesn't really have any relevance to this Easter egg. It's all about uh, getting March 1978, then changing March to November, and using the time slider to control the paddle. Anyway, not much else to do here. Let's go ahead and uh, step on out. 
Now for the next Easter egg, we have to go all the way to the clock tower. And all we have to do is look up. And you can just see it on the screen. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but you'll see the word, the letter is D O U G, Doug. Who exactly is Doug? Maybe one of the Cyan employees. Who knows? And now for the last Easter egg, we have to go inside this log cabin and um, close the safe and put in the combination 423. There we go. And 423 is actually a reference to the USS Torsk, SS-423. And once we have that combination put on the safe, we then have to go to the courtyard and click on the arrow. And down goes the sunken ship. And I now have a minigun! Yeah! Let's go hunting for some clears. And as a matter of fact, this minigun and that... Um, cannon turret right there, they're actually a little nod to an April Fool joke that Cyan did back in 2000 when they announced Mist Mayhem, which is supposed to be a 3D re uh, remake of Mist, but instead of a point-and-click adventure game, it's supposed to be a multiplayer first-person shooter, like TF2. And actually, that April Fool joke actually led to the release of Real Mist, uh, the production of Real Mist, and around that time, Cyan was working on another project called DIRT, which stood for Dunny in Real Time, and Dunny in Real Time actually eventually became Uru. And the engine that they used for DIRT was used here for Real Mist. So that is it. That is all the Easter eggs that I can show you here in Real Mist. So I'm sorry about the one Easter egg in Rhyme that I couldn't get to. I don't know why it wouldn't show up. But anyway, that is it for this Let's Play All Together. And yeah, all I have left now are the last two parts of Descent Maximum. And with that, I shall finally bid you farewell. So, thank you guys so much for watching this Let's Play of Myth. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed playing it. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Shura Gagbitoti.